Welcome back to Cigar Time, the world's largest viewed show. Well, at least largest viewed. How can I say that? Cigar show. Hey, cigar hey. Show. now I do understand that Finland and Norway are nipping at our heels. Are they? Yes. They have two cigar shows in those countries that are climbing in popularity. Oh boy! Because it must be winter time. They have very, very long winters. So you know, we got We need your support. What are we doing today? We're going to do the Rocky Patel. We're going to smoke edge. some fish. Carajo. Carajo, right? Yes. yes. Why don't you tell us a little bit oh, about oh. it, yeah? Well, I just want to point out that it just has one band, which is a foot band, so pretty cool. The Rocky Patel Edge Corojo. The wrapper is a Corojo. The binder is Honduran, and the filler is Honduran. My favorite tobacco. Oh, it was Honduran. The size that we're talking about today is the Toro, and the taste profile are wood, caramel, and cocoa. So I hope I'm going to get some of that. Still no moose dropping. Yeah, folks, we're going to get some wood. What is with you in moose droppings? Well, you know, we sold a cigar years ago that we told everybody that it had hints of moose droppings in it. That's true. Really? Real it was very though. popular. It sold very well. It did sell very well. <coughs> it's a nice pre-light flavor. Very, yeah. it's like sweet Ooh, tobacco. Let me hurry up and catch up. Mm-hmm. Like, get it, definitely catch get up. The, the, the caramel taste. You know, I haven't had one of these in years. Really? Since it was a, what, like a First new came brand. out? Yeah. yeah. The uh, Edge is, there, is Rocky Patel's number one selling cigar. Out of all their brands, did you know that? How many different edges do they have now? A lot. A There's lot. the regular, the light, the Habano, the, Habano, the La Unica thing in there. Mm -hmm. Maduro. And, and a Carajo. Carajo. That was the oh, and the Nicaraguan. The Carajo was the first really? one. And then came the Maduro. The Maduro was the number one. And mm. that was really their return to business. Cigar mm -hmm. yeah. after they faded away as Indian tobacco. Indian tobacco. Oh, right. that's right. I miss those old labels, the Indian tobacco. I still have yeah. some. No, we I should bring them back. That's not a bad idea. We need to talk to them about bringing those back. I would like to bring those back. What I, do you think? Yeah. Go I, out. Do good I believe that some smiley face company owns that brand now. Mm, I don't they're very think so. Happy. No, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, stay tuned. You may see them in our store soon. You just never, ever know what's going to happen around here. Right, the Gary? Smiley faces? Absolutely. No, I know. What, Ooh. the smiley faces? What Not the smiley faces. <laughs> oh, my God. That was, <laughs> that was funny. That was the funniest thing of all time. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's uh, time for uh, Paul to tell us what are you going to pontificate about today? Well, I figured we've covered so many areas where they make cigars and grow tobacco that it was time to really go back to the roots and talk about Cuba. Ah, nice. 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 Uh, however, I, I want to warn you, we're not going to be able to cover this in one episode or two or maybe even three. There's a lot of ground. To, there's 500 years worth of ground to cover. And I plan on covering every, every inch. Every no, single year. I really don't. Every year. Actually, actually <laughs> I, I'll get the really early history out of the way because that's probably the best bet. Uh, in pre-Columbian times in Cuba, the Taino Indians smoked tobacco. They mostly smoked it in pipes or, or little tubes that they rolled out of uh, palm leaves or wood, bamboo. And uh, of course, we all know that Christopher Columbus showed up. Um, and we all think that Christopher Columbus was fascinated with this process and brought it back to Europe. The fact is, he was not the least bit interested in tobacco. He, he told no you this? He noticed <laughs> <laughs> He told John. He told, he told Uncle Max. Max. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, John um, yeah, he noted it in his diaries, but it was just another oddity about the Indians that he found. Um, however, there were other people beneath him that thought that there was something interesting about tobacco and about the process. And they did bring it back with them when they returned to Spain. And immediately, the king and queen of Spain banned tobacco smoking. Uh, the gov the yeah. government in England banned tobacco smoking. Democrats. The Sultan of the Turkish. Did I say that? The Sultan of Turkey. Uh, said that anybody caught smoking in public would have their ears cut off. Democrats, wow. um, just like today. 
tobacco was really considered a horrible thing that nobody in civilized society should mess with at all. What do they know? But why? Um, why because. did they think that? Just because it was too much fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pleasure police. Hey, God knows you're not and that's allowed where, to have fun. That's where syntaxes came from. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until uh, Cuba became a formal colony of Spain that growing tobacco as an industry or cultivating tobacco as an industry was born. It's kind of interesting that the primary reason that they decided to make an industry out of it was the second major city in Cuba, not Havana, was Trinidad City. And Trinidad was desperately looking for a way to compete with Havana, to get ships to come to them, uh, to have some sort of cargo to sell, to do anything at all. And the first thing that they began to do was to bring uh, non-natives, we'll call them, they started to bring white people from the Canary Islands <laughs> by the boatload to Trinidad City for the express purpose of building or establishing tobacco plantations in that area. Paul, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you if you knew this or not. Trinidad, I believe, was the ancient capital of Cuba, and to this day is a most magnificent city. I've been there a few times. It's a magnificent city with neoclassical. And, and uh, what's that type of uh, building? I forget. But it's just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous town. Gorgeous Greek town. revival. What's that? Greek revival. Not Greek revival. Uh, I don't want to spend half the show talking about it. But go ahead. Well, and, and Trinidad City wanted to maintain that stature. And they viewed the importation of people from the Canary Islands and the exportation of tobacco as their opportunity to do it. Uh, gradually, that began to catch on. And they were successful. And it is the primary reason that that end of Cuba began to be the center of tobacco production. Colonial building. Colonial. Colonial style. <laughs> OK. Uh, I'm old. Modern, it, it takes a little while, yeah. <laughs> You know, an interesting sidebar, I know I'm sure you're going to cover it when you come to the more modern history, but uh, cigars were used in a very interesting way by the CIA. And the CIA made several attempts to assassinate Castro mm -hmm. after the revolution and after the Bay of Pigs fiasco, and they tried, uh, they tried exploding cigars. <laughs> but fortunately, uh, El Comandante, as he's called in Cuba, was smart enough to have tasters so they caught the brunt of the tobacco blast. So wait, 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 wait a second, he had tasters. So he had the guy light the cigar in his mouth, take and a Castro couple of took puffs. It, took it from him? Yeah, the guy would take a couple of Oh, he of probably puffs. snipped the end off. Ah. Uh, I thought they were poison cigars. Didn't no, he try that exploding, nine times? I think. They were exploding well, first it or was maybe it was exploding and poison. First, it was, actually, there were two phases to this. First, it was exploding, and second was, and this is no joke, treated with hormones that were supposed to make his beard fall out. So it wasn't going to kill him, it was going to disgrace him. Oh boy, I moving we're along. Yeah, it's weak the head ourselves. about, left the head about 450 years. Yeah, but it was yeah. a, yeah, that it's, was an a it's, it's an interesting side note. Yes, okay. Tobacco caught on well enough that eventually the governments of Europe gave up on the idea of banning it altogether and instead decided that as governments they should make money at it. So in 1717, the King of Spain declared a total monopoly on Cuban tobacco. And what he basically said was, there will no longer be any cigars made in Cuba at all. All that Cuba could do was ship their tobacco to Spain, and all Cuban tobacco manufacturing would take place there. And that's really the point at which people like the Dutch and the British and, uh, Germans. and the Germans began stealing seeds from Cuba and planting them in other places all over the world. And in fact, it's all the way back then in the mid-1700s that the phrase Cuban seed tobacco took on mm -hmm. meaning, which today it doesn't really have anymore, since virtually all tobacco that we smoke is from Cuban seeds. 
But back then it had real meaning because they were trying to plant Cuban seed in places all over the world. Um, after a hundred years, under pressure from all of the other governments of Europe, the King of Spain gave up that rigid monopoly and allowed them to begin once again producing cigars in Cuba. Uh, and that's really when the age of Cuban cigars that we know about and the Cuban cigar industry as we know it was born. It's interesting then, we're talking about 1817. Within 20 years, 25 years, virtually all of the major brands that you've ever heard of that come out of Cuba were already established at that point. So for example, Partagas, which is just about the oldest, 1827, Ramon, and, uh, Ramon Iones, which is the oldest brand name of a cigar, first registered brand name of a cigar, 1830. Uh, H. Upman, the bankers from England, decided that there was going to be so much money in this that they uh, took all their money out of the bank in England and went over to Cuba and started their own brand of cigars, built a factory. That was 1844. Uh, La Corona was 1845, and Monte Cristo and Romeo and Juliet, and those folks were all in by 1850. So really, the, the foundation of the Cuban cigar industry took place right in that little window mm -hmm. in the mid-1800s. Mm. Uh, a lot of stuff happened in the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like hundred years worth of stuff. Oh, I don't mean it like that. I don't mean it like that. I met a lot of important. And I have to put up with that. A lot of important historic things happened in 1800. I think it's worth. I think you left out one of the most oldest names that had relevance in this country, Henry Clay. I did leave that out. You did, and that's a very old label. That's also from from the 1840s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the significance of Henry Clay is, anybody know? It's the ugliest cigar ever made. Well, that's beside the point. <laughs> but he's named after an American. Senator, wasn't he? Uh, I think he was a senator. I believe oh, no, he also was a vice president. I believe he was a vice president of somebody's. I he was still in the Lincoln administration. We have to ask Max, only he goes back. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was. Probably he voted probably for voted for him. Voted for him. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> possible. We're moving along. Okay. Um, I kind of was looking at that as a good end point for this part of the discussion. Oh, the, okay. The, the industry was born. What I want to do in the upcoming episodes is talk about uh, what makes Cuban cigars different than cigars from elsewhere in the world, but I thought that we could sort of segue into that in a future episode. It would be like, why is this Cuban cigar different from all other cigars? Yeah, if you want. Yes. Sounds like a holiday coming up. Yeah, it, it does. It is coming up. Something like that. Well, it is, it is getting towards to be the end of March. That's true. Spring is coming. We don't want to pass over that. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hey, I don't write this stuff. <laughs> no. Check out my ring. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> your you foot, know, foot ring fits right on your finger. This is the first time I ever saw a Rocky Patel edge band that's printed on the inside. Yeah, I saw those oh, too. really? That's new. So it can go either way. Oh, my God. Uh, well, I, I don't know if I'd say I that's a Rocky's face. Yeah. Well, <laughs> is it Prano means yeah. Okay, well, I think we are, I think, is it time to talk about this cigar? We've been smoking it and talking about Cuba so much. Yeah. Are we going to spend the next 10 minutes discussing the, the intricacies of the band? We did that last week. No. Something like that. All right, uh, since... Paul uh, pontificated enough. It's time for somebody else to talk. I'm going to have to get a dictionary to keep up God with you. Why don't we let the lovely Miss T describe her feelings and elocute how she enjoys Ellie. the inner finer smoking pleasures of the Rocky Patel Edge Car Car Carajo. Well, of course I'm going to love it because it has Honduran, you know, tobacco in it. I love Honduran. I do too. Um, it really is true to the taste profile. Um, I do get the woodiness, the caramel, and the cocoa. Now, I'm getting something a little strong. Is that the Corojo wrapper bringing yes, that, yeah. that strongness in? Um, when, you first, when I first lit it up, it was kind of a little on the like softer side, but as soon as you start smoking it, it started getting stronger, 
and stronger. Um, and I also noticed I got a lot of smoke as well in my mouth from just a small draw on it. And you don't even have to, you know, try to suck so hard. It's, you know, just a little bit and you get a lot of smoke in your mouth. Um, beautiful construction. Love the cigar. Very nice. Right. Are you engaged to that cigar? Yes, I told you're you. You're wearing its ring. I'm wearing the ring, and hence the name ring. Har -har. No. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, this is my favorite Rocky Edge cigar, um, the Corojo wrapper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely before I smoked it, I definitely got the caramel taste. Um, when I blow it through my nose, I definitely get the wood taste. I don't get it the cocoa as much, yeah. um, but definitely the wood and the caramel taste. Um, it's burning pretty well, very well constructed, but it absolutely is my favorite Rocky Edge. What is that called when you blow it out of your nose? Retro, Retro hail. Retro hail. Oh. Blow it through your nose. Teach me that. <laughs> Paul? I'll do it right here on the show. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still reconciling myself to how different this cigar is than I remember it. Because I remember it being way stronger, but also kind of boring, and it's not. It's much milder than I remember, but it's got a lot more complexity to it than I remember. And the, what I'm finding to be the dominant flavor is caramel. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, this is this is a very good cigar. Um, I'm a fan of Coro mm -hmm. and also Honduran. Um, I find it to be medium to full, and I, I get I'm getting a little more spice than anything else yeah. from this. I, I don't know exactly what the spice is. Maybe I don't know if it's peppery or not, but. Um, I am also getting a little bit of the, the caramel. Definitely uh, great construction, beautiful wrapper. Um, very much enjoying this. Yeah. You're not getting wood? No. Nah. <laughs> That's a shame. I find this to be a nice medium body cigar with a lot of taste, a lot of smoke, even burn, well constructed, and a pretty good bargain, I think. How much mm -hmm. do these sell for? These are uh, six thirty. Six thousand, and they come in bundles of twenty-five, right? Bundles of twenty-five, yep. Oh. We we have them on the shelf for uh, boxes of a hundred. Boxes That's of hundred. That's how we normally sell them, but you can buy them in boxes of uh, Bundle. twenty-five. Bundles, bundles of, of twenty-five. Bundles of twenty-five. Uh, bundle is one hundred and fifty-seven fifty. Wow. Yeah. So sure, that's. But I think we oh. offer a deal that brings them down to around a hundred dollars. Something like that. Around around a hundred dollars. Well, I think. I think we still got that. The show yeah, I think we can do better. The show went from cigar time to let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Ah. <laughs> Discount Harry you lives. Can, you can bring do you a have a hard-boiled egg in your pocketbook? <laughs> we can bring in a paper clip. Yeah, I think we can do better. How much better can we do? What is it? Uh, 80. 157. Yeah. Yeah, se yeah 79.95. Holy mackerel. you the 95. Right. Well, wait a minute. Well, you took, you took all the everything out of it. There'll be nothing left. How do we well, feed our children? Don't we'll buy her. 80. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> well, if you're going to go that crazy, yeah. let's knock another, you said 79.95? Mm -hmm. So that would bring it down to a little over $3 a piece? Wow. Oh, the hell, the hell with it. Let's make it 69.95. Unbelievable. That's just, un it's just art you're out of your mind. I mean, so I hate that's, that you're my boss, so that's about you're you. what, how I much can't is believe that? it, I'm so choked up over here. How much is that, like <laughs> 260 or 270 a piece? Down from 630 for this popular cigar? Yeah. Should we clarify that it's for a bundle of 25 and not a box of 100? It's not a box of 100. Yeah, I can't do the math on 100 and the discount. I mean, just buy them in 25. Limit five to a customer. And again, like we have the last several weeks, you have to go to our website, which is cccigars.com. There you will find a handy-dandy little coupon that we'd like you to kind of cut out and bring in, or just bring your smartphone in on the web page, show us the coupon, and the friendly person behind the counter will be very happy to oblige you. And remember, that's a bundle of 25 of the Rocky Patel Edge Corojo, uh, which is a Toro size. And uh, they're normally one hundred and fifty-seven fifty, and you're going to get them for sixty-nine ninety-five wow. for know, April fifteenth. So that's more than fifty percent off. I do like that. sixty. That's, that's awesome price. I don't care. Let's just get them out there. Fine. Mm -hmm. Any arguments? No. No. Good. no. I'm good. good with that. We're here to make people happy. It's, it's, they're going to be really happy with. They're this. starting to hit golf balls now. They need them for the golf course. They need them for outdoor. And we're here to support everybody. Just Things are tough out there. It's a good golfing cigar, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know if it would hold up if you hit a golf ball with it. 
You could probably putt with it, though. Putt okay. with it. You could putt with it. You absolutely could putt with it. You could play pool with it. Okay, we good with that? Yes. yes. Limit five to a customer. <coughs> Sixty-nine ninety-five. No nuts. ups, no extras. I think you're crazy, but all right. Sixty-nine ninety-five. Drive them home. Okay. All supplies last. All supplies, All supplies last. last. Thank you. Okay, what's our they're next even, topic? They're even cheaper when we run out of them. Yeah. <laughs> our next topic is <laughs> favorite things to do while smoking a cigar. Ooh, that has all kind of fun intended. Don't start yeah. with me. Thinking about the next right. cigar, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, start, the next we'll start with Paul. Well, I, you know, I'm kind of stupid. And that's the, first, that's the first smart thing you said. And I can rarely do two things at once, like think and chew gum. So, talk and look at the camera. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I definitely uh, can't do that. Wait, give me some of that, though. <laughs> anyway, so generally speaking, when I'm smoking a cigar, the only thing I'm doing is smoking a cigar, which might explain why I'm as non-productive. <laughs> <laughs> non productive as I am. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. 12. 12, so it's 12 hours of. Yeah. Yeah, 12 hours of sleep. Well, eight yeah. hours of sleeping, at least four hours to do anything productive, and you're eating half of the four hours, so it's two hours of work. It's an hour and a half commute each way. An hour so and a half commute. Leaves an hour of work. So basically, there's no work. That's lunch. Lunch. <laughs> and then he wakes himself up to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> With a cigar. <laughs> no, actually, my, f my favorite thing to do while smoking a cigar is to sip a be uh, an adult beverage of some it. sort and just relax and let go of everything else. That's really what I like. Let go do. of everything else? <laughs> I knew you were well, say that. almost everything else. Uh, Scott? <laughs> almost. I don't know how I follow that up. Um, yeah. <laughs> one is, uh, one is uh, oh I guess my most uh, favorite is, there's not much to talk about with it, is I just love to sit in a hot tub smoking a cigar. Oh, it doesn't get too uh, no. wet. No, no, I get Do wet. You get wet. Ah, uh, yes. I don't want that image in my Does head. Does a cigar get wet? No. Oh. Do you no. put Mr. Bubble in the hot tub? I did. <laughs> Once, yes. <laughs> and the hotel was very upset with me. Do you, do, you, do you go diving for your rubber ducky? You know what I once did? I was in Chicago in the winter, and there was a hot. The only hot tub they had was out on the roof of the hotel, oh. yeah. and it's cold, and it, it was a deep hot tub. So, yes, the cigar, yeah. I was like, I just, <laughs> holding it like, yeah. the hell with this. I actually went and I grabbed the deck chair and I sat it sat right in the middle yeah. of the hot tub. Oh, That's nice. cool. That's I sat cool. there like, yeah. I like that. It was good yeah. thinking. Yeah. Good thinking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but my, my second favorite thing is, and this goes along with relaxing, is fly fishing. Absolutely love uh, to, to have a cigar. Mm. You're out in the middle, you know, the middle of a stream, in the middle of nature, and, you know, you got the, the rhythm of the, the fly ride going back and forth. It's just all very, uh, very relaxing. I think I can guess yours. What? Eating. Let me think. <laughs> I can't eat when I smell the cigar. I think you like to have a cigar when you view porn. No. Did That's you really say that? You don't? What do you do while you view porn? <laughs> Soda. <laughs> <laughs> Adult beverage. <laughs> No, I, I have two things. I like to play golf. I was, I no, was going to uh, say uh, golf. I swear I was going to say golf. I I uh, smoke Black a cigar. Porn. I usually smoke three cigars on the golf course, one every six holes. Uh, they usually last that long for me. And the other is just sit and watch TV. Sit down in our, one of our huge lounges and at, watch TV. At most and, of our stores. And smoke a cigar. It's just relax after a long day with these guys. Oh. So that, you need some relaxation. You should yeah. pay us for that. Oh, my God. Miss T? Stop. My favorite thing to do is take pictures while I'm smoking a cigar of That's myself. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking. I like the generational thing. I like to never smoke and take okay. pictures, you know, of myself smoking and posting them and stuff. So that's your favorite thing. Yeah, it's my favorite thing. To, I mean, what else am I gonna do? She's taken like fifty of them already today. I, I, I <laughs> sit in a hot tub, go I, I, anything, get a hot air balloon. Something. I was gonna say washing dishes. Wa I mean, washing dishes while you're smoking. Washing your cigar. dishes. And you know how hard that is. I mean, I really vacuum. <laughs> Vacuuming, maybe that dusting. I tend with your, to run with your shoes off. I tend barefoot. to I tend to run to much more simpler pleasures. I just like to breathe while I smoke a cigar. Quite simple. Oh God, right, really? Contemplate your navel. You just breathe. The what? Navel. Oh, all right. 
spice it. I don't breathe when I smoke. I mean, spice I breathe I think, after I, I think we, I think we can all agree that what we really, really like to do is relax, have a good time, have a beverage, have good company. As always, a cigar is to be enjoyed. A cigar is not a tool to keep you from nervous habits or anything. A cigar is to be used for pleasure and to give pleasure. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill Clinton. You see the face? Well, you see when, her face? Oh, my God. When you wish someone, you, you know, uh, let's move on. Here's a, we have, actually, here's a question, though. We haven't rated the cigar yet. So I have a question first. Oh, okay. Do you, would you rather enjoy a cigar, like, by yourself, alone, or with other people? Other Which, people. Well, if they're halfway intelligent. It depends on who they are. Yeah, if they're halfway okay. intelligent, I kind of like another person. I like another person. It depends right, on who I am. Let's, let's, let's rate this cigar before we completely run out of time. Well, because it's a Rocky Patel and it's an Edge, 4.75. Woo! Wow. Oh, that's oh my good. God, is that too high? He's uh, such a hard grader, too. <laughs> I give it a uh, 4.5. Wow. Okay. Got 4.5. Paul? 4.25. I go with 4.65, which gives it a 4.53 and 3 quarters. Fair I enough. wish I could Remember, do that math in my head like bundles that. of 25. So 25. <laughs> 25. <laughs> what is that? I she don't said know. She said she wished she could do the math in his head like him. <laughs> so does he. 20, 25 for only how much? 69.95. Not 70. 69.95. Not 75. You not 99. But 69.95. Are you out of your mind? That's a savings of $87 a bundle. Wow. But wait. But wait, if there's you, more. If you buy right <laughs> now. Right now. And you come into our store or one of our nine stores to buy one, you get your shipping free. And <laughs> and on top of that, I'm going to beat that offer even more. Mm -mm. When you buy a bundle, you're going to get a Laurel and Hardy handshake. Oh. Who's Laurel and Hardy? Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Really? That was a setup line because I knew oh. she was going to say he that. He knew I was going to say Who's that. Who's Laurel and Hardy? Oh, okay. Well, oh we're coming to that time in the show where you we just about run out of it. steam and things. Well, we might need all this time for me to get my saying right, so. You get your what right? <laughs> my <laughs> saying. <laughs> saying well, life is, I see what he does. Life, life is too to cheap to short short cigar. Scott's always very long-winded <laughs> with his goodbyes. Oh, my God. Do we really have to say goodbye? Well, tune in next week and find out who, who what, who did what. What are we doing next week? I think we're doing the Alex Bradley Black Market Robusto. That is correct. Uh -huh. You keep forgetting it. Did I guess that right? You yes, did. That was a good guess. Are we going to give those away too? I don't know. I don't know. It's up to you. Well, should we tell them now how much it's going to be or no. make them wait? No. Let's make them wait. Make them wait. Make them wait. Okay. You'll have to wait. So I think, uh, I think it's time to say goodbye. Bye-bye for now. Ciao for now, everybody. Paul, I have to think about mine. <laughs> Smoke often, smoke happy, and don't do anything else while you smoke. Right, right. Let's just wait around a few minutes while Scott rehearses his goodbye. Life is too short to smoke cheap cigars. Yay! Yay! He finally got it. Where have I heard that before? I don't know. I think nowhere. I he, never gets nowhere. Right. he never gets it right. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, on behalf of all my cellmates here at Cigar Time Zoo and uh, Sanitarium, we thank you very much for viewing. We hope you'll have us into your homes next week, and we bid you a joyful evening and a good day tomorrow. Thank you.